1963 film Charade is one of the 60s cinematic masterpieces. Opening in Manhattan's Radio City on a cold December morning with, according to Tom Wolfe, crowds already lining up down 50th Street and 6th Avenue to make sure they secured seats. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The president is dead. Women here in shock, some fainted. Grown men, Secret Service men standing by the emergency room, tears streaming down their face. There's only one word to describe the picture here, and that's grief, and much of it. It's official. As of just a few moments ago, the President of the United States is dead. During the dark days after JFK's death, Charade offered Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn, Henry Mancini score, vibrant dresses, suspense, glamour, and Paris filmed with the colourful mind of Stanley Donner, director of Singing in the Rain. The world seeming to have become strange, someone had killed the most powerful man on the planet, leader of the free world, but Hollywood's illusions were still intact. And despite the culture of darkness, some months later, American film critic Pauline Kael wrote, Charade, which, although no more charming confectionery trifle was, I think probably the best American film of last year. The movie is remembered, however, with the line, It's the best Hitchcock film, not directed by Hitchcock. By the film's release date, Hitchcockian films always beat up their own subgenre, and is to this day a word. A great admirer of Hitchcock, who was at the height of his career, wanted to make a film similar to his idol, saying, I always wanted to make a movie of my favourites, North by Northwest. I searched for something with the same item of adventure, suspense, and humour. The movie's original trailer showing as much, with this blend of suspense, comedy, and romance. Donan also going further in his reference to Hitchcock movies, both subtle and direct nods. The movie's opening credits designed by Morris Binders, seeming referential to Saul Bass's work on the opening credits for Hitchcock films, particularly Vertigo, North by Northwest, and Psycho. Donan included similar casting choices, Ned at class as a supporting character in North by Northwest, as one of the three villains in Charade, and like North by Northwest, cast up-and-coming actors as villains. Here, Walter Matthau, James Corbin, and George Kennedy, and in North by Northwest, James Manston and Martin Landau. Done and going as far as to riff off Hitchcock's own dialogue at one point. Do you know what's wrong with you? No, what? Roger O. Thornhill. What does the O stand for? Nothing. Nothing. How what's most interesting that's been carried out in Hitchcock's film is the romance expressed between Cary Grant's Peter Joshua. Dial. His name. Called Dial. Sorry, the name's Adam Canfield. Okay, or oh, Canfield. And what's your first name today? Brian. Brian Cook. What? Okay, let's just call him Cary Grant. However, what's most interesting that is carried over in Hitchcock's films is the romance expressed between Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn. However, there was another Hitchcock-inspired spy franchise sweeping the 60s, other than Charade. Ian Fleming's Man of Mystery had made his screen debut in Doctor No, about a year before Charade's release, and its sequel, From Russia With Love, only coming out two months prior. The franchise also North by Northwest inspired, Cary Grant, one of the first picks for Bond. North by Northwest, considered by many to be the proto-Bond film, particularly of the first few Connery entries. Bond. From Russia with Love, going out of its way to add an extended reference to the crop duster scene from North by Northwest. Or 
3, the early Bond film, North by Northwest and Charade, holding similar building blocks. Unnecessary MacGuffins, stunning landscapes, vicariously high fight scenes, and fascinatingly engaging to detest between its two romantic leads. Reggie, cut it out. Okay. Well, now what are you doing? Cutting it out. Who told you to do that? However, where Charade deciphered from the Bond film, particularly in its romantic core, Bond films have all, except maybe No Time to Die, had some romantic core as its subplot, where instead, Charade makes its espionage scenes the subplot and centers on the relationship between Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn. Bond, with all his success, had been changing what was viewed as acceptable to do on the screen, his various escapades through the franchise ending with his famous tendency to sleep with women, nearly always out of wedlock and sometimes without the knowledge of their first name. Charade, seemingly in response to this, toned down the overt sexuality of contemporary spy films, casting Cary Grant and Hepburn giving the film more of a 50s to a feel than a 60s espionage film. Do we know each other? Why do you think we're going to? I don't know, how would I know? Because I already know an awful lot of people and until one of them dies, I couldn't possibly meet anyone else. Hmm. Well, if anyone goes on the critical list, let me know. Mm. Quitter. The pair of examples of actors famous for old Hollywood, who pose or described as, quote, Bond's fierce sexuality. The romance primarily more friendly, with a 50s jokingness, often diffusing more sexually headed scenes. The shower's in there. Oh, come on, really, open the door. This is a ludicrous situation. I can think of a dozen men who are just longing to use my shower. Well, why don't you call one of them? I dare you. Oh, you're a nut. What are you doing? I'm taking off my shoes. What do you think I'm doing? Did you ever hear of anyone taking a shower with their shoes on? I usually sing a medley of old favorites when I'm in the shower. Oh, any requests? Shut the door. Oh, I'm afraid I don't know that one, miss. Well... <clears throat> Shut the door! Why? Come in and watch! Drip dry! In this respect, the crime subplot almost seems to be a distraction for a romantic couple, in more than a couple of times throwing a wrench in between the lovebirds. It's often the case that Hepburn will pick up the phone, smiling at Grant, to hear the voice and immediately drop the face. Yes? Miss Slabbit, Bartholomew. I spoke to Washington, Miss Slabbit. Go ahead, Mr. Bartholomew, I'm listening. And the movie's final scenes isn't the defeat of the villain, who despite being played by Walter Matthau, has a limited presence. It adds the final scene where the two finally get together, without any obstacle, which just accents the primary importance of the romance. Some identification now. I would not have a license. Yes, prove it to me again you're still trying to... Marriage license. Did you say marriage license? No, don't change the subject, just give me the stand. <laughs> oh, oh, I love you, Adam. It's zooming out to show four additional frames, some showing earlier action, though whilst important, only flanks the primary love story. Well, before we start that, may I have the stamps? Hi, this is Luke. If you liked that video, please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications about new videos.